Man, that was a jam packed. See, I kind of appreciate. Bro, we, we're, we, we're starting. We're in it now. Yeah. Started it. <laughs> I can stop and start again if you want. Nope. All right, well. Let's do it, baby. Yeah. Mid Midweek freak treat. F chance. Minutes 65 to 70. Holy guacamole. What a five minutes. I'm yeah, Adam. There is. Yeah, you're Adam, and I'm guacamole all over my face. <laughs> Uh, I'm also Steve, uh, just for, so you know, all you fudge packers out there. Mm -hmm. Let's go, let's God, because this one was a jam-packed five minutes. I said a couple of things before this episode st started, you said a couple of things before this episode started, and it just happened. You know, I said things I wish I could take back, you said things you wish I could take back. That's just the way it goes. Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of weird stuff. A lot of sexualizing Allison and Alley Cat 69. Yeah, well, yeah, I kept saying she's putting the 69 in Alley Cat 69. Yeah. Like, ah. Well, you got to warm up the vocal cords and you might as well say something really cool. Exactly. It's not being recorded. We did all our best accents when it's not recorded. It's fine. We were trying to figure out what Aztec sounded like before Europeans came along. And none of those accents were appropriate for air, but we had a good time saying them. Well, they're not appropriate for air now, but they would be back then. Yeah, if you had a bunch of puppets that were making those voices, then that's fine. You could definitely make millions off of that if you played your cards right. Yeah, billions. The gold? The gold in them hills? Oh, the gold right in them hills. <laughs> this, I'm sorry, I just, I can't, I just, I, 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 let's get this out of the way right now. We get credits in this five yeah. minutes. We made it to the credits. Ah, no! I I said very jokingly uh, before, right when we started this five minutes, that wouldn't it be crazy if we got to the credits this five minutes? And then we both, you know, uh, relaxed. We calmed down <laughs> yeah. and agreed that there's no way we were going to get credits this, uh, this episode. No, we wiped the tears out of our eyes from laughing so hard at that idea and went, no, nah, we're definitely going to yeah. get a minute or two next episode and then credits will be the last like three minutes to four minutes, something like that. No way. Yeah, no way, Yahweh. It's all here. It's over. We're in the credits now. I can't believe it. This movie is A, not long enough to even be considered a movie and then B, shortened on top of that this movie is an hour and seven minutes long unbelievable yeah. i love it yeah yep. this has like over six minutes of credits right that, it's that gotta be, be the case. it's gotta be they, those credits must roll very slow because this isn't avengers endgame where there's seventy five thousand people that worked on this movie i could count on two hands how many people worked on this movie and that is that's including the cast so mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to get seven minutes of credits out of this, I, uh, but I'm excited to find out next week. I hope we get, like, a two-minute, um, like, CEO introduction to Bridgestone Media Group. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, how I think they padded the credits. It, it's got to be something like that. Yeah, there's a commercial at the very end of the credits. It's like, hi, my name is Bill Gregory, and I'm the owner of Bridgestone Multimedia Group. Uh, we make a film, we'll distribute and produce it for it. Put together a film for anything over $10,000, and we will slap our name on it, and we will put it on our YouTube page. No questions asked. We'll put it on Encourage TV for free. You won't even see a dime from it, baby. But hey. And this... But, I was going to yeah. say, Fat Chance has 29,000 thumbs up. So, and like two, over 2 million views or something like that. That's pretty good. That's better than your video. That is better than And I, I ain't hating at it because it, it really shows a message of uh, spirituality. Let's get down to Jesus. Yeah. Let's get down to the word of Jesus. That's what people keep saying before they frick in this movie. They go, let's get down to the word of Jesus. And the Lord said, get it on. Oh, get it on. <laughs> I almost splooged right there when he said that because that's my trigger word. But <laughs> get. like at the beginning of this, Maggie or Mark or Katie. whoever her Katie. name is, uh, is talking to Justin and telling him how bad he is for not wanting... Alley Cat 69. 
yeah, and how at what a catch she is. Just what a yeah. what a dime that Alley Cat sixty nine is. And uh, I gotta say, I even said this to you while we were while we were watching it. Oh, Katie's the best actor in this movie. Like Katie is mm-hmm. the 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 monologue that she gives. You know, going to bat for Alley Cat sixty nine is the best acting in this movie, bar none. Like it's not even close. She's very good, and I wouldn't mind seeing yeah. her in other Christian movies. Of this five minutes, there's like a full minute where she's still talking to Justin and trying to get him to like see the or at least see Alley Cat as a person that's just been crapped on by life. And this was just. Uh, an error in judgment she didn't think that anybody would love her um and that's why she made the choice to use her picture instead of herself mm-hmm. she and she she didn't want to admit the truth because she was afraid of losing justin and he doesn't say some cool guy line like well she or she just did right. instead yeah. he's like cool fine i love her i guess fine or say something like beat it suckers and then pull around with a shotgun and shoot uh, Katie in the face. Well, exactly. Or say something cool like the Lord said, let's get it on. And then he locks the door <laughs> and she goes, uh-huh. <laughs> and, then, and then the credits roll. I still have they live in my mind and it, the one liners. And I just want people to be cooler in movies. I just want people to be cooler in life. Not just in the yeah. movies. That, say one-liners all the time. Like when when the barista hands you your coffee, be like, "Hey, uh, neck, don't, uh, hey, uh, thanks." Next time, bitch. Yeah, exactly. F- f- uh, f- uh, f- <laughs> no, that's not cool. <laughs> oh no, you're gonna have to bleep both of those things. Hey, I gotta bleep. You. <laughs> that's true. No one will know what I say. I might say you fuck. No one will know. They but don't know what order it goes in. You know what though i feel like f those people who have been e- emailing us i think it's time to stand up for ourselves and not bleep a gosh darn thing oh no we gotta no no no. oh my god no no, no. i'm no i can't i can't lose this and if the if the unwashed masses <laughs> come for us can't lose this. i can't lose this if i if we don't st- if we don't stick to the demands of a small a very a t- microscopically small but very loud group of people then what then why are we even doing this show we need to be rolling over for anyone's feedback at all from anyone see this is why this is comes down to the difference between adam and steve yeah adam was born first so he sticks to the rules he was pampered more he doesn't have a cushy spine i just want to let it loose i want to f the rules screw the masses and live free. This guy's out here saying he wants to F the rules, but he doesn't even have the galls to say fuck on his own podcast. So, you know, this guy's out here talking like he's Mr. Big Shot, but who's the one who's really letting it hang out here? That's right. A-D-A-M. Frick saying swears. That's for lamos. All right, man. Well, you know what? I, I, I agree to disagree. Yes, we'll we'll always disagree, and next time you're ramming me from behind, we'll uh, come together. But we'll always agree to disagree, and that way yes. nobody's feelings get hurt. Everyone's on the same page. Agreeing to disagree is such a weird thing. I know, right? Like, but it's all it is is someone being like, "I don't want to have this conversation yeah. anymore." Like, that's all that is is someone being like, "This is the nicest way I can end this." So I'm just this. I let's not talk about this anymore. <laughs> I still want to know you, I still want to be in you, but I don't want to talk about this anymore. Yeah, I want to live rent-free in your brain when you think about this discussion that we're having and how I've agreed to disagree with your stance, but I don't want to... That is how my wife and I go to bed each night. We both yell at each other, agree to disagree, and then we fall asleep immediately. Oh, with big smiles on your faces and just, like, wrapped up in each other's arms. Yeah, we scream it at each other's head. So she flips over, I scream it at the back of her head, oh. and then I flip over, she screams it at, at the back of my head. Mm-hmm. Then you're sound asleep. Then you can sleep like a baby. Mm. Go directly into REM sleep when that happens. You just yeah. dive into the deepest corners of sleep, and you're dreaming immediately. And you're, you're, you know, you're walking around a shopping mall at that point with Santa Claus and and uh, somebody, whatever. Yeah, it knocks something loose in your inner ear, and you just like done. You're out like a light. Yeah, you don't even have time to see Mustard Man creep out of your closet and come for you. You don't even see that. You, as you fall asleep, it's, you're gone before Mustard Man even shows up. And I know he's there because you see mustard all over the place when you wake up. So you're like, oh, Mustard Man got me again. But you, 
just can't do anything about it. Yeah, I wish Mustard Man would stop cocking me in my bed because, like, I got all this, like, I don't I don't want to have to clean the sheets and my pillowcases every time I wake up. I don't want to, I don't want the first thing I do in the morning is to wipe mustard off my face. I don't want to have to do that every day, Mustard Man. And you don't want to tell Mustard Man enough with the mustard because that's, like, his whole thing. That's yeah. his whole existence. It's the thing that defines him. It's like, if he, did, yeah. if he doesn't have mustard, then he's just man. And what is that? <laughs> the, like, uh, what evil lives in the soul of man? And there's already ketchup man. There's already a relish man. Those That's taken. Yeah, there's already a mayonnaise man. I don't want to meet him. I don't, wanna, I don't want to touch that guy. He's disgusting. He smells terrible. Well, mayonnaise man was the actual firstborn, but, uh, you know, God saw to that. Exactly, yeah. Well, you put, put mayonnaise man on first. If you're making a sandwich, don't start with ketchup. You start with mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is the base of sauces, of sandwiches. Mayonnaise is the, the building block of life, as far as I'm concerned. Here's a treat for you. Sure. Get some mayo, add a little bit of water, and then uh, chop up or, you know, dice some garlic. And you got a real nice dip, like just or a real nice sauce. You get some salt and pepper in there. It's delightful. Okay, so mayonnaise, water. How much yeah. water? Like two gallons? Too much. <laughs> it's it's. You start out. You start with a tablespoon of mayo. Then you dump in yeah. six cups of water, and then yeah. put in a sprinkle of garlic. And baby, you got a delicious treat on a hot summer day. Drink that cold, and you're laughing. Yeah, baby, you got a drink on. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, really good for the digestion, really good for the immune system. And couldn't we all use an immune boost right now? Yeah, good for the toes, good for the gout. For sure. It sucks that gout right out of your toes. <laughs> I, I don't know where it puts it, but it sucks it out of your toes. It ends up somewhere. I think it's got to end up somewhere, but probably like in an alternate dimension or another dimension. I I'm sorry. Uh, did you just casually pull a Merry Christmas orange out of your pocket and not expect me to just watch you peel and eat a Christmas orange live on the podcast? I expected to do it and I expected to say something about it. This is all pre-planned, baby. <sighs> I love it. I love a pre-plan. What do you got? What kind of <laughs> orange are you eating today? Is it a navel? Is it a mandarin? What are we talking? Well, technically, it's a mandarin, but it's uh, it's in between the size of a navel and a mandarin, but it peels like a mandarin, and it tastes like a mandarin. Ooh-wee, it's lovely. That sounds great. Way better than a clementine. Get the hell out of here with clementines. They're fine, but hey, he made an elephant. Right on, my man. I made a penis. No, it's an elephant, please. Yeah, Children, whatever. this is a family-friendly show. Children, listen to this show. Fuck you. If you don't edit that out, I'm going to go fucking crazy. Well, I'm going to edit out the first one, but I'm not going to edit out the second one. I'll tell you that much. I'm keeping in your insane uh, rant that you just had. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> hey, surprise, surprise, Justin and Allison end up together. Woo. Duh. Very quickly. Immediately. Immediately. Like it's. She's like, at the lake crucifying a kid. Uh, yeah, there there is a great moment where she's talking to all the kids in front of the lake and goes like, Today we're talking about faith and the sacrifices that need to be made in order to maintain our faith. And then they wheel out the little cross and all the kids go, what? And start sharpening <laughs> the nails. She's like, all right, choose one of you. Yeah. We Where there's a little cross, there's a little kid said to be crucified. <laughs> exactly. Where there's a little cross, there's a little way, of course. Uh, it, but it's like, it's. I like that the camp doesn't choose the child to be crucified they make the other children choose the child which i think is like i don't know it gets you out of like a murder charge it gets like if any of the people from the camp got arrested they didn't pick who was murdered it was a random thing so who's yeah. really at fault and they tell him on day one so you really start a community as a young person which really doesn't happen too much kind of just have friends and clicks but when you're crucifying one of you, <laughs> really get to know your fellow camper. Oh, yeah, because every every interaction is another piece in the puzzle of who am I going to nominate to be crucified at the end of this camp? After seven days, one of us is dying so that camp can live on. Whom will it be? It might be me. I don't know. I don't know what other people are, what opinions are formulating about me, but I know that I don't like that little curly haired kid and I don't like that little girl over there and I don't like that guy. So they're all going down. Yeah. And don't take uh, an extra helping of mashed potatoes. 
you're not too good at Street Fighter, but you're not bad at it either. No. Even if you let someone win, it's they still feel like they beat you legitimately just because you're that good at kind of faking it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, you become well-rounded as a Christian child. Very good. No naughty naughties. Everyone's very nice. Those kids are so well-behaved for that week. It, it's hard to crucify one of them. But, you no, know you have to. But it's like... God, when they get here, they're so well behaved. But one of them's going up on that cross on, on Sunday. One of them, one of them's not going home with their folks, I guess. I forgot that it was only a week. Like over a summer, you crucify one kid, but like they have like multiple weeks with different children coming, so they're like crucifying a couple kids a summer. Oh yeah, if there's four weeks of camp, there's four children that aren't showing up to grade three the next year. That's tough, but I mean, what are you going to do? It's tough, but it's fair. It's a good system mm. that works, and it's worked for f three years at this point. There's no reason to change it now. We've got three years of success and no police knocking on our door. Why would we stop crucifying the kids? Yeah, and I believe if you survive 24 hours, you're fine. You can go home. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they say that, but... At the end of the 24 hours, if you're still there, they just tip your cross into the lake and go, well, pff, good luck. If you float, you're a witch, and we'll burn you at the stake, I guess. <laughs> yeah, or whatever, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. We don't, we don't really know. It's never happened. No, no one's made it to 24 hours, so they haven't had to deal with it yet. Out of the 12 kids no. they've crucified since the camp opened, not a one of them lasted 24 hours. Kids forget to breathe after 20 hours of crucifixion. You know, That'd that's, be that's cool if there was, like, a true detective life like show at this camp trying to find out what's happening and where all these kids are going. That's not a bad idea. Maybe we could write that. Pitch to Pierflix. Pitch to Bridgestone Multimedia Group. I'm really focused on Mustard Man right now and his story. I don't know if I could uh, go into that. Well, there's no reason that this movie couldn't be a backdoor pilot to a Mustard Man series. You know, like maybe Mustard Man it's shows up true. in it. He steals the show. Everyone talks about the crucifixion of the kids, but what they're really talking about is the appearance of Mustard Man and how that changed their life. And then from there, yeah. we get the Mustard Man Amazon Prime series and the, you know, the Mustard Man Telenova and you know, all the great stuff. Yes. We should also, I I feel like Mustard Man should be like a 60-year-old look-alike of the real Hulk Hogan. Okay. Okay. So you're talking a child with mostly balding hair, a big horseshoe mustache, and just pumpkin-colored skin. Yeah, and trying to do an impression of Hulk Hogan the whole time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like when Hulk used to host American Gladiators, and he called everyone brother, and then that one woman went up to talk to him, and she, he was like, "Oh, how do you feel about how this went, brother?" And she went, "Well, brother, I uh, blah blah blah." And you go, "Oh, it only kind of works when he does it, I guess, huh?" huh. Yeah, you don't get to say brother. That should have been in the contract, really. Oh yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you say brother on the set of American Gladiator, Wolf is gonna kick like scissor kick right in the head. Oh, remember Wolf? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. I remember Iceman. Do you remember Titan, the guy yeah, who had the big thighs that he would shake all the time? They all had huge thighs. Oh, but Titan, but his whole thing was his th big thighs. He was thick. I used to follow. Man, I wish I lived in the '80s so I could move down to LA and just get huge thighs. <laughs> get on TV. Thigh master every day in the gym in Gold's Gym. I got. I'm the opposite of a gym rat. I got no upper body strength and the thickest thighs you ever did see. Like, wouldn't it be cool to just like inject yourself with a bunch of steroids and like become enormously huge and be on American Gladiator? Yeah, bro. There's nothing stopping you from doing that now. Well, other than the fact that oh, American Gladiator doesn't exist anymore. That's the only yeah. thing stopping me from getting on American Gladiator. That's the only thing stopping me from becoming a behemoth of a man. Very, oh, that would be a great name for your American Gladiator, Behemoth. Behemoth. That's, that's actually, or Mustard Man. Well, I, do we want to tie Mustard Man to the American Gladiators, too? Well, I think they would want to. They want to get on board. Of course they do, but first they got to hire Behemoth. They got to get Behemoth <laughs> in the door first, and then once they yeah. once America falls in love with Behemoth, then you can bring in. Then American Gladiators becomes a backdoor pilot to Mustard Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the threads are connecting quite seamlessly. <laughs> you, you you did it.
<laughs> Everything, every piece of content we create from here on out will be a backdoor pilot to whatever Mustard Man becomes. And then we'll make Mustard Man. And it'll be a backdoor pilot to, I don't know, a Sons of Thunder spinoff or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to say praise uh, Mustard Man because you don't want to praise false idols. But isn't he just it? Like, that's what this is. Well, yeah. And, like, who's to s- decide if he's a false idol or not? If he yeah. if he is a god, then how is he any different than god, you know? Yeah. He is but one man. Of course. But god is but one man. Well, yeah. actually, I guess the- he's three. He's the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. But um, <laughs> get right down to it, and it's Mustard Man, baby. Why is why is the Holy Spirit in the Trinity? Like two of those things are things, and then another, yeah. then the third one is just like the essence of a fart Ooh, floating in a room. Gee. Yeah, like, <laughs> you gotta make religion a little spooky, or the kids won't come. Well, of course, yeah, and of, and the the ding dongs won't believe it if there's not a bit of superstition built into it. Yeah. Oh, it's got a Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Oh, yeah. I, I like it way better when it's called the Holy Ghost. Because at least it's acknowledging yeah. that it's ch- childish. <laughs> at least they're going, oh, the Holy Boogeyman as well is here. Let's change it to the Holy Boogeyman. Let's change I think it. that's something. Why don't we change it to the Father, Son, and the Mustard Man? <laughs> I feel like it's perfect, but also might need a tweak. Yeah, maybe get rid of the father, son, and mustard man. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Oh, uh, the the really holds it together. I don't know if we can get rid of the the. The father, the son, the fa- I'm, I'll do it here. The father, <laughs> the son, I'm pointing at my heart now, and the mustard man. I touch both my shoulders. That's where the mustard comes from, is the shoulders? Yeah, where the clavicles attach. That's where the mustard leaks out. And you can't stop cool. it. It's, it's leaking all the time. <laughs> yeah. But then the, the devil's cleaning up the mustard, so you don't really know the mustard inside of Of course, yeah. The devil, a.k.a. Ketchup Man, is always watching. Should it be Ketchup? Yeah, it should be Ketchup Man. It's the red, it's the evil, it's the blood. Yeah, it's the P. <laughs> it's the U. <laughs> <laughs> I... I knew Allie and Justin were going to get together by the end of this movie. Obviously, they oh. were. But what I wasn't expecting was for it to be revealed that this is a fucking true story. <laughs> that these are yeah. all real people. <laughs> all this stuff happened, I guess. <laughs> it's crazy. It's on a true story. And apparently Allison has lost 250 pounds since this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, this is mean what I'm about to say, but they really Hollywooded up both of those people. Oh, yeah. Well, he looks like a Greek god, this Justin man. Well, he's the pinnacle of man. And Allie, a cutie as well. Minus the Very. pillow. <laughs> what the hell's that? Yeah. But minus that, yeah, Hollywood is free. I, I think there might be two pillows under there. That's my suspicion. That's my breakout uh, reveal. When we see her at the end outside the restaurant, yeah, I would agree with you in that it looks like there's a smaller pillow, like kind of un- like where her sternum is, and then a big yeah. pillow around like the size 52 waist pants that she's wearing. How was real Allie on the, not on the set every single day going, no, I... Come on. (laughs) I mean, it is telling that we rarely see her in the fat suit. Like, most of the time when we see Allie, it's like from first pillow up, essentially. So you don't really see that bottom pillow. (laughs) Yeah, tit up, yeah. You don't really see the bottom pillow all too much because it's the worst one easily. You you really don't. It, it, It just takes you out of the film experience when you see that little pillow. Mm -hmm. That big little pillow. Mm. It's a bizarre world that they've created. And I just realized how dumb this story is. Like, the whole thing... Who would take this to a producer as a real story (laughs) and get it funded and made? Like, this is a very... Somebody gets uh, catfished (laughs) and they're Christian. Okay, print it. Yeah, well, uh, hey, all you needed was... And they're Christian. And they went, good. Here's here's $15,000 for you. Right off the bat. 
There's a quarter million dollars. It's a real mind fudge at the very end when they just show them. And, like, it says, like, Allie and Justin got married two years later. And you go, like, wait, did this happen, like, like four years ago? <laughs> like, did this just happen? Because online dating, in the way that th they use it, was not around 15 years ago. Definitely Unite just started four years ago or five years ago. There never was a Unite before this. <laughs> Do you think that the the person who Ali is based on, maybe also named Allison, felt like insulted when she saw the fat suit? Like felt like, yeah. Oh no. Oh, is this how they're gonna make me look? And then at the end, they're gonna show a real picture of me? Oh no. Yeah. She she sent him a lot of letters saying, "Oh no," as the <laughs> subject. Um, but it didn't change a thing. The rights had already been given up. She was nothing at this point. They just, got the picture. Just got the footage from today's uh, shooting session. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they didn't give a crap. They were crucifying kids. Yeah, it was already locked. And that's the thing. Now that we know that these are real people, we can really track down this camp where they crucified the children and finally bring an end to their reign of terror. Yeah, maybe that's what we'll give to you, the, uh, the readout on the camp next episode. Well, I mean, hey, here's we are going to have something to talk about next episode because as the, like, as the seconds are counting down in our five-minute countdown, they're at a restaurant, the scene fades to black, and then bloopers start. Well, after yeah. we see the stuff about Allie and all that, then the bloopers start. And we, I think we're going to get a couple of minutes of bloopers next week, and I'm very here for it. We're either going to get a CEO uh, that's definitely looking creepy, probably a priest, a Bridgestone Media Group, or we're going to get three minutes of bloopers. Yeah, three minutes in heaven, as they'll call it. I mean, we were... I can't wait, actually. We were utterly robbed and deprived of bloopers in, in Walking with Herb, and I think we're owed, at the end of this journey, I feel like we're owed bloopers. So give them yeah, to we're us. we're utterly raw. If A Bug's Life can have bloopers in it, then this movie can have bloopers. They had to make those bloopers. Those weren't real bloopers in A Bug's Life. They wrote the bloopers and then animated them. You're telling me you can't even give us free bloopers that you don't even have to work yeah. on? You already have them. And these are George Lopez bloopers. Right? And he was probably cracking everyone up constantly on set. Yeah, him and ESG. Who? Or whatever his name is. Edward James Olmos. Uh, yeah, EGO. Yeah, EGO. Yeah. I love him. Uh, I love him. We, we love, love him. 